Are you in the food business? No. Then what do you tell me that my prices are high? Do you know the expenses are in the seashore? No. Well then, the best thing for you is to go somewhere else. I want you to leave. Thanks for coming in. Hey, doing, Jersey? Welcome to Lunch Live. And that curmudgeon you saw was Pat Tarada, owner of Pat's Lunch in Middle Township. One of the stops on this guy's Real Jersey Shore. Real Jersey Shore Summer of 2012 tour. And we're here at Rooftop Golf to talk about what you've been doing. What have you been doing? Uh, just finding the real shore. I mean, uh, the people and places that make this the greatest 127 mile strip on earth. And what was this in response to? What did you do this? I mean, it partially to the show. We know, we know what the, the MTV that Jersey show Shore is, show, yes, right? right? Which you don't even like to mention it. Yeah, I, that I, which I, will I, go I, unmentioned. I think, so the the first stop on your tour was the bumper car psychos of Keensburg. Keensburg. And Keensburg. I mean, we, it's it's the most maligned town. You think Seaside has image problems? Keensburg is way worse. <laughs> so, and Keensburg is uh, and an amusement park has been around. It's the oldest amusement park in Jersey. And these guys, the bumper car Ride psychos. Ride bumper cars. Two lovable big dudes. They you know, each clock in at close to 400 okay. pounds. Yeah, your butt moving. But they just ride the bumper cars every Friday night. Uh, they let their fans know on Facebook, and uh, they just run, pay for it. They pay, first of all. It's not some promotional right, thing. Right. And they just, you, you try to you try to knock them out, uh, and it's all, it's all good fun. You're and, part of the attraction of that yeah, place. Yeah, they, they are. They are Keensburg's biggest claim to fame, really. I mean, they, they're cult heroes. We won't hit each other. A lot of times we'll try to set each other up. And they'll forget there's two of us. So they'll all be coming after me. All of a sudden you go boom, 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 I'll get three or four people to hit me. All of a sudden here he goes boom, 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 you'll hit them. You know? uh, and these are really cool Lucy uh, bumper cars, which are like the creme de la creme of bumper cars from the 40s and 50s, 60s, a little older. And so they're classic. I mean, it's just a classic time warp attraction. And then these two uh, tattooed Harley Davidson riding bumper car psychos. Oh, it's the dreaded windmill of death. Oh, this is this the classic. Yeah, miniature the, golf they don't one. make them like this anymore. If it doesn't have they a windmill, if of course doesn't have a windmill, I, I agree. I, I scratched it off the list. It's but the, the, it's, you you can't find these courses anymore, they, and they don't build them new. All the new ones are like these adventure pirate courses and stuff. Oh, Whoa! so close, and yet so far. Well, the second stop on the tour was the Fudgy Wudgy Man in North Wildwood. Jeez, ice cream. Hey, ice cream! You know, people may say, what's a fudgy wudgy? Well, it's a term that, back in the 50s, they would, for the ice cream vendors, who would sell the fudgicles on the uh, on the beach. And it sort of grew to expand like any ice cream, selling any ice cream. But there's really only one, and there are other fudgy wudgy men over the years, but there's only one undisputed fudgy wudgy man right now, Joe Duncan. If I wasn't doing this, if I hadn't been doing this the last 40 years, I'd probably be in the range of 300 pounds, or, and or probably dead. Na, 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 fruit bars. And people know him. Going back, you know, the parents who went went, went to him as a kid. Everybody you know, knows that yeah, guy, right? They, they would pull out pictures, a picture of him like back in the 80s, you know, posing next to the car. Okay. Hello! No! Goodbye, lead! Next stop on the tour was... Oh, the beach cleaners. Yes. Here at tour. <laughs> yes, that was fun. Work, I, a day in Munchmobile, so I get home at, uh, actually I never got home that night, ended up sleeping in a Parkway rest stop. Beach cleaners were here at 4 o'clock in the morning, and that's when they start. You know. One person, the boardwalk line underneath the boardwalk picks up all of the uh -huh. debris. Another one will walk the middle between the two garbage pail rolls. And I have the truck and I go up and down and pick up the chairs, umbrellas, surfboards, clothes, towels, sheets. Pick it all up. Well, just the apparatus. You have the guys with the old-fashioned pickers, you know, picking up the paper and the cups, and the and the the, the vacuum trucks, which look like something out of a sci-fi, you know, alien or something movie. And then the guy in the big rake, which has no resemblance to a rake, it's this big. Uh, the beach the pony, I like to call it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to put it. It's a John Deere tractor with this like four thousand dollar rolling rake conveyor belt thing. You feel the pressure. Oh, he did right. not feel the pressure. Next stop on the tour was? Viking Village, which sounds like sort of medieval theme park, but it's, it's, it's not. It's one of uh, six commercial fishing ports in New Jersey, uh, an LBI in, in Barnegat Lake. It's really quite an operation just to sort of see, you know, the fish come in, they weigh it, you know, pack it. Like, you know, it's like this competitive 
packing contest because you know they had to like, get it in and get it out as as quickly as possible. So it was, it was really kind of cool uh, to watch just to see how that fish goes from the boat to your t to your table. Oh! Well. Oh no! That was a nightmare. We both had trouble with Bugs Bunny there. And the last stop on the tour. Pat's, the unforgettable Pat's Lunch in uh, what Middle, a character. Middle Township, Pat Tirada, 93 years old, still with the attitude, with the like, South, uh, attitude of uh, South Philly by way of the Jersey Shore. I don't care. I run this place my way, not what the customers tell me. I tell them. If it's agreeable to them, I give them what they want. If they're not satisfied, walk the hell out. But, uh, I, I call it the diviest eatery down the shore. There's no place like it. I mean, it looks sort of respectable from the outside, but inside it's this shack, basically. You, know? you have to make it. I have to make this. You have to make it. It has to be a hole in one. Can he do it? Oh! 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 Right over the cop! Right. One shot win. So that's it. You got any more stops left on the uh, Oh, sure. The we're going to go right through Labor Day into September. And other ideas just come as uh, as we go. People can send them in if Absolutely, they have suggestions. Yeah, email me, uh, pgenovisestarledger.com. And uh, I think it's something we'll definitely do next year. Because there's so many there's so many Real stories. Jersey Shore Part 2 next part summer? Part 2, yes. Nice. The real, real Jersey Shore. But, I mean, there's so many stories down here. And like 130 miles, 127 miles of, of stories. And we got full videos of most of those stops along the tour at Ledger Live, nj.com slash Ledger Live, links to all the stories. We real named. characters, real Jersey characters. We don't have to import, we don't have to import right people from Chile to you know show the real Jersey short. He gets the free game.